everyone it is monday this uh it's 18th of july sorry my sevens and eights down there threw me off the 18th of july a midsummer edition if you will of mental health mondays i'm mayor chris jensen honored to be with you here on this day as we uh, talk openly about mental health and some great conversations i'm joined by a good friend of mine a true servant of our community and of the mental health community kristen voice the owner of pathways in lincoln Kristen. Good morning, Mayor Jensen. I am so excited to be back. I love doing these, so I've been yes. spring together, so I'm excited. We, to we had a couple weeks off here during the holiday season with the 4th of July. I hope people had a wonderful time uh, enjoying festivities with their friends and their family. Uh, we, you know, Kristen, you and I have talked about it. It is Julie Jensen's favorite holiday, so it is always such a great time of year to celebrate all that is great about our country, but even here in Noblesville, for example, to see the parade, to see the festivities people were out and about i just I, it just represented all that was good in our society um and, and that's important to focus on because if you turn on the tv right now uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of negative things going on as well so uh great to celebrate a little bit but we're, we're glad to be back with you for another edition of mental health monday if this is your first time welcome if you are a long time listener thank you for continuing to tune in if you have any questions during our show today Fire them off there in the chat. We'll do our best to get them answered on the fly. If not, we'll circle back with you and let you know kind of some answers that we want. This, is, this show is for you to help answer some questions. We're going to go over some awesome topics today. I'm excited. A long time coming, but 988 is a new uh, mental health crisis line that has been established and went live this weekend. I think it's is it nationwide, Kristen, to correct me if I'm wrong. Nationwide, so we're going to talk a little bit about that and how really that effort right there is just one more step to mainstreaming the conversation around mental health, making it as just as important as say 911, which we all know and rolls off the tongue. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Then we're going to talk about some family dynamics. Ooh, good family dynamic conversation. Gotta love that. In the middle of summer, as we go into back to school time, as we go into the fall season and then holidays, you know, gearing up some conversation around family and patterns and dynamics and you know I, we have all those things don't we i know at least we do it at the jensen household i'm sure they do it at the boys household as well so every family Nobody every family's it. got it every family's got it so hey before we start that conversation though let's go for, through some square breathing exercises to right our mind and our body for this conversation take it away kristen this is one of the most important steps that you can do in your life is to regulate your nervous system and the reason why we start with this is because this is a foundation to handle any emotions that come up. If you get activated by something in this conversation or in the days to come, come back to the breath to help recenter you, get you back to ground, grounding and have you less reactive so we can respond rather than react. So first thing we do is push, we stick push into our feet. This is important because we're kind of centering our nervous system. We're going to inhale through our nose for four. We're going to hold for four, and then we're going to slowly release, release out our mouths for eight, like you're cooling soup or cooling a cookie. I recommend doing this four to five times in more if you need it, an hour. So when you do feel activated, you'll remember what to do. And I even have a post-it note on my mirror that says breathe. So my brain can kind of cue my brain to remember because in the heat of the moment, guess what? This gets hard to do. So I'm making it sound real easy right now. That's why I invite you to practice this. This becomes a practice. So let's do a couple of breaths together. We'll do two breaths, center into your feet. And if you're standing, you can press into your feet. Deep inhale through your nose. Hold. And release. Just kind of checking into your nervous system. I can already feel a difference just even with one breath. So pressing into your feet, big deep inhale. Hold. And release. Something I have to tell myself often when instead of giving a response to one of my kids or my husband, I just tell myself, just don't say anything, just breathe. Don't say anything. And it might be 20 times I'm saying that, just breathe till I can get my prefrontal cortex, that CEO of the brain 
um, back online, my rational thought, and then respond. Again, I'm making it sound easy. It's a practice. Yeah, and uh, as with everything that we do, it's a lot easier said than done. So uh, keep practicing, as you said, keep working on that breath. It sounds so simple, but it can be uh, tricky. Pick a time of day or maybe somewhere that you're at throughout the day. I told you all the time I do it in the car. Um, you know, that's kind of my time to breathe a little bit. And so uh, you have to practice what you preach. So get working on it. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about a new hotline that's been established, 988. And Chris, I feel like we've heard about this for probably several years. There's been a lot of conversation around this. Um, so I'm going to let you kind of take it from here and talk a little bit about, you know, what it is, what it isn't, um, and, and ways that we can use this hotline. And I keep using the word hotline, probably not even the right use word for it. Um, so I'll let you kind of work through some, yeah, crisis line there. Um, I, I equate it in my mind as similar to just another version of 911 um, for versus a physical emergency. This would be more for a mental emergency, but that's how I have it. And Chris Jensen said, may not be correct. So I'm going to let you walk through kind of uh, what the purpose is here and how we maybe utilize that throughout our daily life. You are spot on. So the concept right. started in 2020. It's been actually going on for years and years, but the 911 system, about 20% of the calls, and I think that's more, I think that's a soft number, we're, we're really geared towards emotional well-being, uh, mental health calls. And so in, that's how it started, 988, 988. You can text or you can call. This is the big difference. You don't just have to make a phone call. A lot of people have anxiety about making a phone call. So now you can text 988 or you can make a phone call if you're experiencing any emotional distress, if you're having any suicide ideation thoughts, homicidal thoughts. And this is important. Like you're having thoughts of hurting yourself or someone else. This is an important line you can call. Um, and they will pull in 911 if necessary. That's the key. You don't have to mitigate that. Let's say you're with somebody. I get calls all the time or questions around, I'm with somebody and I don't know what to do. The 988 number has trained clinicians. These are trained therapists that deal with mental health issues, suicide, how to do suicide calls 24 hours a day. You can text or call 24 hours a day. So if you're with somebody, you don't know what to do, call 988. If this is a wellness check, you are gonna call 911 at least at this point. Um, but again, 988 can be a call and they can tap into 911 or uh, pull into the appropriate authorities as need be. So if you're with somebody and you're afraid that they are suicidal, the first thing I want to say is you can ask them, are you wanting to commit suicide? Are you wanting to harm yourself? And that question people get scared of because they're afraid they don't want to plant an idea that is the first question that they're going to ask typically on the call. They may say it a little differently, but they have to assess the situation and bring it to the light. So 988 is going to be a number you're going to want to reference, keep with you. If you're with anybody, a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a coworker, do not be afraid to use this resource. You had a question. Yeah, I was just going to comment, um, you know, the, the term suicidal gets linked to this quite a bit. Um, is it really for just suicidal ideation or, or is it for overall mental health in general? I would love to have you kind of expand on that a little bit. Overall mental health in general. They're trying to broaden this because some people don't know is the person suicidal or not. I just know this person is having a nervous breakdown. They are shut down. They are maybe aggravated in some way. They are depressed. Their functioning has decreased. So perhaps they're not showering. They're not bathing. They're not brushing their teeth. They're, they're not showing up for their job. They, and you need some help, nine, or, that per, or you are that person, 988 is your friend. There again, are there trained clinicians? It's not just if you're suicidal, if you're having a mental health crisis, so this is an acute situation where you don't know where else to turn. They will plug you into resources in your local area. So these are crisis centers across the country that have been kind of rope, I would say, um, aligned with the system. And so they're trained clinicians that can then pull in support resources as necessary. And go ahead. No, that's, I was just going to say, because I, I feel like, um, you know, obviously our goal here is to not get somebody to a suicidal point. We, we want to identify this earlier, and, and sui the suicidal ideation point is kind of the peak 
um, where obviously this, this crisis hotline would come in incredibly helpful. But prior to that, you know, getting folks, I always talk about 